What's up you guys, it's your girl Cheyenne here and in today's video we're going to be talking about six things you should know about your partner before committing. So I guess you can say these are things that you should know during the talking stage. There are actually a lot of people who just jump right into relationships without knowing these six things. But without knowing these things, you know, you can actually cause a relationship to end that way. So it is crucial that you come to find out these six things about your partner before committing. That way, you know if he's a keeper and he's someone that you should invest more of your time into. Or you should know like, oh, no, I'm good. I have to find somebody else. You're just not him. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. Okay, sis. So the first thing that you want to find out about your partner, whether male or female, right, is if they want to have kids. Say you long to have a really large family of your own one day, but your partner never saw himself being a parent at all. Think about it, right? If all you want to do is to be a parent and this person just wants to have you to himself, no children, none of that, right? What type of future will you guys have? Will that make you happy knowing that you sacrifice yourself to please your partner? But you also have to think about it, right? You cannot force children on your partner. Children cannot save a relationship. Children never save a relationship. If you think that your relationship is rocky without a child, a child is just going to add on to that tension. Children do not save relationships. They just test and challenge your relationship even more. So you want to find out if your partner wants to have children because if you try to force a child onto your partner and you pop up pregnant or your partner pops up pregnant, right? All of a sudden there's a seed in the womb, right? The partner who does not want children and has made it clear to you that they don't want children, they're going to peace out on you. And then next thing you know, you're the single parent. So please take this advice into consideration. Because at the end of the day, when you want to commit to somebody, you're looking at long term. That means you might see a house. You might see children. You might see a wedding, marriage down the line, right? But if this person don't want to have children, that can alter this whole thing. You know, we could just ball it up, throw it away, right? So yeah, find out if your partner want to have children or not. So I might have spilled a little bit too much tea on my last tip, but my last tip sort of piggybacks onto this next tip, which is to find out if your partner wants to be married. Think about it. Okay, let's think about it. Marriage means forever. Infinity sign, right? Forever. You are making yourself united with another being so that you guys are no longer two separate beings, but you guys are one. If you want to commit to your partner, but your partner does not want to be your forever if your partner does not want to be married, this should be a red flag for you to deuces, okay? If your partner does not want to be your forever, that is a red flag for you to leave the relationship quickly. It is very toxic and dangerous to stay with somebody who, you know, you don't see eye to eye with. Stop wasting people's times, man. This is why I'm making this video. Stop wasting your time. Even though it's just the talking stage, sis, the talking stage is the most important stage you set the foundation for your relationship baby you need to cut ties with your partner if they don't want to be married but that's all you want to do or you need to cut ties if you don't want to be married but that's all they want to do so this next tip that i have for you guys right is to find out if your partner is a leader whether male or female you want to find out if they're a leader or not because just imagine just think about it let's take it let's take it step by step let's you feel me rewind a little bit right can you see your imaginary or potential child or children looking up to your partner can you see your potential or imaginary children following your partner is your partner an example for your imaginary or potential future children these are really important questions right these are really important questions because when people have sex, whether you use a condom, whether you use all the protection in the world, when you have sex, you always run the risk of getting someone pregnant. Is your partner a leader? Does he take initiative when there's a problem? Is he a hustler? In a way, I guess I am saying, can your partner provide for you financially? Can he support you mentally, spiritually, physically? If your partner is lacking in any of these areas, you got cut ties, deuces, period, because it's no need to waste your time. I'm just thinking about if you have children or I'm just thinking about the relationship long term, right? Why would you want to commit to somebody that cannot be a potential father or mother to your children? Who cannot even lead themselves, let alone lead you or lead another smaller, more dependent human being? Like, I just don't understand, baby. You need to find out. Is your partner a leader, okay? This one is hot. This one a little bit um underrated, but this one is hot. You want to find out if you and your partner share the same religion. Ooh, let me tell you why this is important. Your relationship with your higher power, God, 
should be prior to your relationship with your partner. Well, your religion sort of surrounds your whole life, how you act, how you think, how you behave, you know, the things that you say, and so on and so forth. You want to find out specifically what type of religion your partner is, how he practices it, and how deaf he is in tune with his religion. So let's say, you know, a Jehovah Witness wants to start a relationship with a Catholic. These two religions both read the Holy Bible, but they share completely different doctrines, right? Let's say, you know, Jehovah Witness, they don't celebrate holidays like Christmas, Easter, Halloween, so on and so forth. What if the Catholic, Catholic people, they celebrate, they, oh, they, they go hard on Christmas. Let's say the Catholic won't invite the Jehovah Witness over for Christmas. That's the situation. That's going to start a situation. That's going to sort of uh, cause tension. That's just one example, you feel me? That's one among millions of examples that I can name. Say the Jehovah Witness pops up pregnant and the baby daddy is Catholic. When they decide to raise children, this is going to extremely cause conflict among these two partners. The child's going to be curious, like, hmm, you know, which way is the right way? Mommy, you do this. Daddy, you do that. Hmm. It's just a lot of confusion on top of confusion that already lies between all religions. It's, it's confusing because which religion is the right religion? Because there is only one right religion, but nobody really wants to talk about it because then people get offended by, you know, talking about religion is always a touchy, touchy subject. So a lot of people try to stray away from it, but I'm here to talk about it today. Okay. I hope you guys see my point through these small examples, right? When you date someone that you're not equally yoked to, it can cause division. Jehovah Witnesses need to marry Jehovah Witnesses. Catholic people need to marry Catholic people. Muslim people need to marry other Muslims. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like stay in your own lane, period. This one is hot, okay? You want to find out how your partner was raised. No matter if you lived in a single parent household, no matter if you lived in a household where you might have been molested, raped, no matter if you live in a home where, you know, it's just like the Brady Bunch. You had the mom, dad, you even had a, a pet dog and a picket white fence. Let's say you had it all, right? No matter how you were raised, it always affects your mindset when you get older. I can try to put an example in there about myself. I would say for a really long time, I was like the Brady Bunch. I had the mom, dad, and I had a brother. And we all lived in what appeared to be a super happy household. I was just a kid at the time, so, you know, I was just like, hey, I got both of my parents, and, and it was married, and it's, it's not as bad as it sounds. I don't want anybody to have pity on me, but, you know, my mom and my dad sort of put on a front throughout my entire childhood to play happy, basically, for years. For 10 years, they sacrificed their own happiness for the sake of their children. They wanted their children to have that Brady Bunch type of family experience with both mom and dad who are married and um wow you just always think like you never know a parent sacrifice for their children until you get older how i was raised definitely 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 affected me as i got older i couldn't understand single parent relationships i couldn't understand children who didn't have both mom and dad married living in the same house like it just didn't i didn't know how it worked but even me like when i saw myself having family i just picture you know me the mom with my husband, the father, and we have children together in the same household. How a person is raised, it shows. Like, you cling to however you were raised. So yes, definitely be aware of how he was raised. Ask him these type of questions, sis. Find out the relationship he has between his mom. Where's his dad at? Find out how many siblings he has and how their relationship is. Do he call them every day? You want to find out if he's family oriented. So last but certainly not least, you want to find out where does your partner want to settle down? If your partner wants to, you know, spend his time traveling, but all you want to do is go to school, you guys can clash that way. You guys are not on the same page. And if you guys cannot come to agree to disagree or come to a compromise, you guys can end up separating. What's the goal? Make the plan. And if your plans do not match, that's a sign. It's a red flag. Find out where your partner wants to settle down. If he wants to live in a spaceship, but you want to live underground in the caves. And if y'all can't compromise, you need to cut ties. You guys, I truly appreciate all of my subscribers and even non-subscribers because you choose not to subscribe. I appreciate all people who stream to my YouTube channel just to watch my YouTube videos. It is uh, phenomenal, actually. But um, I thank you guys so much for watching all the way until the end. If you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and add my Instagram. It's going to be right here. Yeah, I'm just going to catch you guys next time in my next video, which is coming soon. Because 2020 is truly my year and the consistent grind is coming. So yeah, until next time. Peace.